battery. Both Jennies, inverter. Boost pumps, throttle lock to the rear, flaps it down, AP start, pinky switch to the rear. Position lights to flash, and that should be up. Up, that's what she said. G'day everyone, welcome back to the Warthog Project. Today's video is part two in the basic series. So the last video we talked about how to connect switches to a computer as a generic USB device in Windows. This video we're going into a little bit more specific DCS stuff. Um, we're going to be connecting a switch to the computer using a software called DCS BIOS. So what we'll do now is we'll jump out onto the workbench and we'll put another little Arduino together and I'll show you how to get working. Alright, so we're back out on the workbench. You'll recognise this from the previous video. This is a Arduino Pro Micro with two switches soldered onto it. Very easy way to do it if you want a generic Windows device. I'm going to show you a different way to do it now with some different hardware. So we've got two switches here and this is an Arduino Nano. These ones are much cheaper than these ones. We have a normal toggle switch. We have a three position toggle switch. So it's the same as a normal toggle but there's three positions on, off and on and an Arduino Nano. These ones here won't show up in Windows as a generic joystick. So what I'm going to do now is show you how we get this connected to DCS using a program called DCS BIOS. Before you start any of this, you'll have to download Notepad++. It's much easier to edit code and that sort of stuff. Don't do it in a normal Notepad from Windows because you'll ruin something. Trust me, I'm speaking from experience. All right, so this is DCS BIOS. When DCS BIOS was first introduced, it obviously kept evolving over time and it evolved into this one here that has a like a graphic user interface and they call it DCS BIOS Hub. I didn't use this one. I tried it when it first came out and it it wouldn't work with half my panel, so I sort of gave up on it and went back to the classic DCS. There's another group that continued working on the older version of DCS BIOS, sort of the classic the classic setup, which is what I still use. And you'll find that with DCS flight panels. So these guys continued using the older one because they designed it so you can use it with Satex slash Logitech flight panels and the Stream Deck and that sort of stuff. Um, I don't use any of the flight panel stuff, but I do use their Arduino library and I do use their classic sort of DCS BIOS. They call it the DCS BIOS flight panels fork. So basically it's the older version of DCS BIOS, but they kept updating it. It's getting to the point now where it's more advanced than the original one. You just have to download this here. You just click on that, download zip, and we'll save it on the desktop. Just go back. You also need to download the Arduino library. Same thing, download zip. And we'll save that on the desktop as well. We'll start with installing the DCS BIOS master zip. So you just will extract that. All right, so this folder here can be saved anywhere on your computer. I save it on the same um, hard drive that DCS is on. This folder here is DCS BIOS master and there will be a readme in there. I'll just read that with Notepad++ and it will tell you how to install it and where everything is. Uh, so in this file, you will find a documents folder and in there you will have a user guide, which will link you to this. This is a very well written step-by-step -step way to install DCS BIOS. It'll show you how to connect and create your first panel. It will show you how to edit LUAs if you need to. And it will talk you through exactly how to wire up to an Arduino your first LED and push button. This is called the master caution example. As soon as you've done this, you will realize how easy it is and you will start making panels. So we'll go through this one at a time. First thing we'll need to do is download the latest versions we've already done. Um, go to our save games folder and copy that scripts subfolder into the save games folder. So I've got a shortcut on the desktop of save games right here. You'll see mine's already there. So I, I saved my DCS BIOS master to that same drive. And then all I had to do was copy that scripts folder into this folder. That's all you have to do is copy the scripts folder in. Um, so DCS BIOS will now work. In that folder, DCS BIOS master, you will find programs, connect serial port command, and multiple COM ports command. So this is, this is the thing that runs in the background that talks to your Arduino and tells it what DCS is doing. So what I've done is created a shortcut to that multiple COM ports command. You can see it up here on my desktop. So every time I run DCS World, I just double click on that first and it'll be running in the background. So all you need to do is if you've got multiple Arduinos, you just have to direct it to the COM ports that those Arduinos are connected to. So you'd look in your device manager, you'd find the number of the COM port and then you'd edit this multiple COM ports command 
and put the number in there. So I've got one on COM port four and COM port three. If I had multiple, I could just, all, all I have to do is keep adding the numbers of the COM ports and then it will know to communicate to all of them at the same time. All right, so that's the install. Now all we need to do is install the Arduino library, which was that one right there. So all I need to do now is open up my Arduino IDE. All right, so it automatically opens your last sketch. This one here is what we were doing on the last video. Again, to install a library, just go sketch, include library, add zip library. You'd point it to your desktop or wherever you saved the Arduino library, which is right there. Double click on that and it would install. Also, I forgot to mention in the last video, once you've installed it, you can delete that from your desktop. It copies what it needs, saves it in the Arduino folder, and then you can delete these. All right, so what we're gonna do now is open up an example. You just go to example. You'll see there's a whole bunch of DCS BIOS ones now. Default serial, IRQ serial, master caution, master and slave. So DCS BIOS, you can set up one Arduino as a master and all the others as slaves. So you can you can basically have one USB connection to your computer and a whole bunch of them slaved off that same Arduino. I've never done that, only because this didn't exist when I started my cockpit. Mine's all USB um, and I've had no problems with it. So we're gonna open up default serial. This is the empty sketch that you'd start with. All you have to do is paste code snippets from the reference documentation here. That's all you need to edit. So you don't really need a knowledge of coding. All you need to be able to do is copy and paste things. And I'll show you where to copy and paste things from. So we'll go back to our DCS BIOS master folder in scripts, DCS BIOS documents. You'll find one called the control reference. All you have to do is open that one up in your web browser. All right, so this is the DCS BIOS control reference. Tip for young players, save it as a bookmark in your web browser. Um, saves you having to navigate to that file all the time. You can see right here that you can select from all the aircraft that it supports. So for example, we're gonna select the A10C and then it's basically got code for every single switch in the cockpit. And then you can search by the panel. So we'll do the AHCP and you can see right here that it has the code you need for every single switch on the AHCP which is the armament HUD control panel. So we'll just click that, copy the TGP off on switch, and then we'll go back to our Arduino code and we'll just paste that in there. And then we'll go back to this and we'll do the master arm train safe arm switch. That one right there, that's a three position toggle. And we will copy and paste that in there. All you have to edit is what pin number you're gonna solder the switch to. So we'll make this 10, we'll make this 11, we'll make this 12. That's it, all the coding's done. Now I just need to connect the Nano and load that switch up and then I'll solder those two switches to pins 10, 11 and 12 and we'll see if it works in DCS. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll connect this to the computer and we will direct the Arduino IDE to that. So tools, you need to select that it's an Arduino Nano, which it already is, and it will be the last one, which is COM24. So we'll upload that to the board, and it's done. That's ready to go now. All right, so now all I need to do is solder up those switches to 10, 11, and 12. All right, so here we are in the Instant Action mission. Again, I apologize for the terrible performance. The com workshop computer is about 15 years old. That's the RHCP. You see now that when we flick this switch, it'll be our targeting pod. And then this one here should be our master arm switch. So arm, safe, train. That's it, works with DCS BIOS. All right, so now that I've shown you DCS BIOS and how it works and how easy it is, I just wanted to show you the pros and cons of that versus this. So this is the one we did in the last video. This one shows up in Windows as a generic USB joystick. Whereas this one does not. This one gets all its data direct from DCS. You'll notice in this one, I didn't need to set up any of the control bindings in DCS because it's getting its data straight from DCS. So it doesn't need any control bindings. This one here, you need to map all the controls out individually for each aircraft. Uh, one, of the, one of the pros of this is the cost. So this is obviously a lot cheaper to buy these than it is to buy these. Uh, probably about half the price. One of the other pros of this is that you can get data from DCS to this card. This, these cards here, the generic Windows joysticks, send data to DCS, but you can't get anything back. So if you wanted a flashing light, for example, a master caution light, 
you won't get it off that card. This one here, though, you can. You can get data from DCS, so you can get a, a blinking LED. You can get an entire display working with one of these if you wanted to. Uh, one of the cons of this is that you can't use it across multiple aircraft without reflashing the code into it. Um, so a as you saw in the control reference, I got the commands for the A10C out of this, but if I jump in another jet in DCS, none of these switches will be able to work. Whereas these ones, you can just jump in the control bindings in DCS and program them to do anything you want across any aircraft. That's part of the reason why nearly all of the switches in my cockpit are set up like this as a generic Windows joystick, um, so I can use it across multiple platforms. Even though mine is a dedicated A10 cockpit, I fly other jets in it in VR, so I like having other all the switches as a generic input. I just wanted to stress in these videos too that I'm absolutely not an expert at this. I'm not claiming to be. I'm also not saying that this is the way you should do it. This is the way. This is the way. I'm just saying this is the way I did it. I'm sure people in the comments will be posting that I've done it incorrectly and there's a better way to do it. Please do that. Let everyone know down below. I'm just showing you the way that I did it and it works for me. All right, that brings us to the end of this video. The next video in the basic series will be all about LEDs and how we get the data out of DCS and into the cockpit. Thanks heaps for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and all that jazz. And if you're watching this within about two hours of it being released, I'll be live over on Twitch now, so come check that out as well. Thanks heaps, and I'll see you guys on the next one. There's a truck. That truck can't park there. Where are you, truck? Where are you? There you are. <laughs> Love it.